going to be creating a UGC portfolio. I thought I would make this video because I've gotten a few questions about how to make a portfolio and it's definitely really important to make one of these when you're getting started in the UGC space because you can send this over to brands to look at and they'll get a better idea of like what kind of content you're gonna be making, the services you offer, maybe even your pricing. It's basically like your resume for UGC content. And together we're basically going to build a mock portfolio. So again, you guys have a good idea of what to add into yours. Obviously over time when you get more experience, you can add more into your portfolio. This is more for people who are just getting started. So if you find this helpful, leave a comment down below throughout the video. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The platform that I use to create my UGC portfolio is Canva. So the one thing I like about Canva is there are so many templates that you can use and match your branding to. So if you just go on to templates on Canva, when you open up a new project, go ahead and type in portfolio and you're going to see a whole list of free templates that you can use. I don't have the pro version. So my portfolio is from the free template and I just kind of like tweaked it a little bit to match like my branding and my aesthetic that you can just go ahead and drag and drop on here. So the template that I actually used for this, it is this one right here. So we kind of have like the same font and the same colors and stuff. And you can see over here that there are many different pages he has like a um, beginning slide about him experience this is more of like a resume kind of style really just like gutted everything out and just put in the essential things on the portfolio so right here we have the beginning slide so this is where you would put your name I'm just gonna put my name right here and then under here I like to add a little description of what I'm doing so obviously you're gonna add UGC content creation over here I like to add like a short short little bio the thing is about creating a portfolio is you want to have a lot of information about yourself in it and what you do but you also want to keep it precise and simple and clean and straight to the point for an example if a brand is trying to find ugc creators on twitter they'll go to their portfolio and they'll probably like briefly scroll through the person's portfolio and see if it's a good match for them. So you don't want to go super lengthy with any of your bios or any of the information that you put out there. You mostly just want to do your services, maybe a quick, quick description of who you are, and mostly the content that you've created before. That's kind of what brands are usually looking for. If they're looking for something like more personality specific, then they would find it through the short little bio. So I already have a short little bio in place, I'm just gonna go ahead and type it out here. I am a Gen Z content creator, skilled in creating engaging content while maintaining brand, I always struggle with aesthetics, aesthetics, okay. This right here kind of shows that, you know, I create content for the Gen Z audience. So I don't have to say I'm 21 years old and I create content. So it kind of establishes that I already know what it takes to grab a Gen Z audience's attention. Uh, I'm skilled in creating engaging content and maintaining brand aesthetic. So that is perfect for a brand who has a specific outline that they want the content creator to follow. I kind of validate for that brand that I create engaging content and I maintain like the branding and the aesthetics. Okay. I also just like creating aesthetic content, let's be honest. This second part kind of explains the kind of content that I'm creating. So I am very passionate about, you know, the lifestyle, beauty, fashion, a little bit of social media. So I kind of cover a lot of niches that I can create content for. Okay, right here, this is a spot to put your photo. If you actually go on elements and then you go down to frames or grids, you can see all of these different like frames that you can put photos in. So if you select all frames, you can see all of the different little places where you can add your photo to. Again, we're kind of referring off to this template and obviously that guy has the same frame as me. So I'm actually gonna put in my personal photo on here. So I'm gonna select it and then just like drag it in there. And then what you can also do is you can double click on the photo and you can kind of move and scale the photo around to fit in the frame. 
Okay, down here is the second slide. This is for basically explaining what UGC content is. Again, you wanna keep this short and sweet. People who are looking at your portfolio probably already know what UGC content is, but in case they don't, in case you're like emailing a brand and you wanna collab with them, and you want to distinct yourself between being an influencer and a UGC creator, you kind of want to put a brief description about what UGC content is. So I'm going to go ahead and create a little text box. I'm just going to copy and paste really quick. And I already have a little description I'm going to write out on here, and that will be included in the template. So you can totally like copy and paste that and add that to your portfolio. But basically what I'm going to write is UGC or user generated content is visual content created by creators or consumers for brands to publish on social media posts or ads. That's basically a really short description of what UGC content is. And then another thing that I like to do and a lot of other creators I've seen put on their portfolio is like why you should invest in UGC. Why is UGC beneficial for brands? So I'm going to go ahead and write a little spiel about why invest in UGC. So to make this more easy on I am going to make it a list form. Okay, so why invest in UGC? Brands with social media presence give an opportunity to create a community with their consumers. That's true. If you're a brand and you're on social media, if you're on TikTok and you're constantly creating content on there and engaging with your audience or your potential consumers, usually the customer will most likely buy from you because you're super engaged. There are a lot of different brands on TikTok. I, the first thing that jumps in my mind is like airline companies. Um, they're super like, into it with their audience, with their comment section, even with other brands too. And that's usually created by user generated content or someone on their social team that is just creating all this content for them. So that's one of the reasons. Now, honestly, I added this little point because usually marketing people are the ones that are looking at portfolios and recruiting UGC creators and conversions is like a big marketing word. <laughs> Nowadays, when you're scrolling on TikTok, at least for my For You page, I'm like watching a video that I think is a TikTok, but it's really an ad. So creating that relatable and authentic content that like flows well into the social media platform that they're posting on improves conversions because now I'm like, okay, now I want to buy that Amazon product. And so I'll go on the website and I'll purchase it. So it improves the conversions. I don't know about how much, but... um. <laughs> Does. And then lastly, UGC content can be used for various projects and campaigns. Again, campaigns, another marketing buzzword. Um, but yeah, UGC content can be used for an ad or for a TikTok and then place on Pinterest. So it definitely represents like, hey, just because I'm making this video on TikTok, you can also use this content to put in an ad. So it just gives the brand all the creative freedom to just use that specific content for all the different social media platforms that they wanna post on or for ads. So we're going to scroll down to the next page now we're gonna get into past projects. Now this is like the number one thing you should have on your portfolio is your past projects. So for an example, I'm gonna go ahead and actually go on and insert like a random short video. So I'm going to insert this video that I made um, with Javi Coffee. This is actually a YouTube short on my channel. But basically what I did is I added a rectangular frame right here and all I'm gonna do is like drag it in, but make sure when this video is fully imported, you click on the video and you hit playback and then you turn off this autoplay video. What it's gonna do is once you get to that page, all of the videos in your past projects slide are going to just like start playing really loud and really randomly. So this allows for the people who are interested in seeing that video, just like clicking on it and watching it. So what I recommend doing is like adding your three best videos on here. So we're going to jump ahead a little bit. And what I did is I created a new blank slide and I moved it all the way down to the very, very bottom. And what I did is I added a yet another frame to add more videos. And I'm going to put like maybe three more on here and again I'm gonna put like my best performing videos onto these frames here's my self-care routine here's a, an Instagram reel I just did and then a tech related video so this is also gonna represent 
all of the different niches that you create content for. And what I'm gonna actually do is on this past project slide, I'm gonna write on here, more work shown here. I'm gonna highlight this entire text and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this little link button and then it's gonna pull up all of like my recent projects but also of my different slides that I have here. So I'm gonna actually press on that new slide that we just put in all those new videos. Why I like doing this is I like just showing the three like best videos and then if the people are interested in seeing more, they just click on the bottom and it's instantly going to take them to more of the videos. I like this method a lot better because if they're interested in seeing more work, then they can press on the button instead of scrolling past like six or 10 videos in order to see your pricing or your photo examples. So that little tip I like a lot better. And then I think you can see in analytics like how many people actually click on that. I'm not 100% sure though. So now we're gonna make another slide underneath that and this is gonna be the pricing one. Now I already written out all of this because this is gonna be a lot to do on video. But basically what I did is I just titled it pricing and I created this little price sheet. So I have three different prices set for one UGC video, three or five. And at the bottom, I created a description saying video content creation for all short form video platforms includes basic editing like cuts, text and voiceover. And that's usually the kind of editing that you're gonna be doing for user generated content. You're not gonna be doing like a whole bunch of transitions and effects or so. So it's nice to include that little thing knowing that like the editing is part of the pricing. It also lets the brand know that they are gonna get some edited content because sometimes brands want it fully edited and sometimes brands want unedited versions. And you guys can kind of converse about unedited in your emails or whatever, but I like to price it as one UGC video because maybe a brand just wants to get one video out there. And then the three and five I've seen that on other portfolios as well. If you're looking for more longer form content, you can also add in this description, pricing may vary for longer term projects. So you can just add that in there so then you can refer in case the brand doesn't like understand like, oh, the price is different because now it's longer term. You just add that in the portfolio and refer that to them. As far as pricing goes, you definitely wanna price yourself at a comfortable amount where it's gonna be worth it for you to create one video or a batch of five videos for a brand. You know, the time and the effort you put into it, even down to like the product. Is it a best-selling product? Is it a new product? You definitely wanna factor in all those things as well as how big the brand is, but you definitely do not wanna sell yourself short because you are the content creator, the video director, the video editor, all of these different roles into just one video. So definitely factor that in when you're pricing. Also, go on Twitter, join the UGC community and see all of the different portfolios that people have made and you kind of gauge like what the good price point is. I've seen one UGC video be from like 20 to $50, but I've also seen like the new standard be like 70 to like even $150 per like video. So definitely just consider that in mind. You definitely don't want to sell yourself short, but you also don't want to go too extreme. Um, especially when you're first getting started, you might want to like start pricing yourself at the lower end and getting some clients and then kind of getting a feel for like how much the workload really is. And then you can go ahead and increase those prices. Obviously your prices are not gonna be set in stone, concrete, tied to you forever. You could definitely update them whenever you want. So that's like my little advice about pricing. But underneath that, I also have services. In case like brands don't have a good idea of what kind of content they want, you can kind of have a list of the type of videos that you are able to do. So you can do an unboxing video, maybe an ASMR style, a test testimonial even. There's a lot of people who are looking for video testimonials for a short TikTok ad or for even Amazon. Um, you can also do a product or service integration. So it could be a day in my life video and you just integrate the product in that video at some point. So those are some good content ideas for UGC content creators and also gives the brand a good idea of what kind of videos you do. Now that's pretty much it at this last slide. I just write, let's get in touch. Obviously you can add your name in here, your email, some social links to where they can reach you. So I'm gonna quickly show you again, like how to add links to these buttons. So then the brand can actually click on the Instagram icon and it'll take straight to your page. So I'm gonna quickly go to Instagram. I'm going to go on to my profile, copy the URL, 
go back to Canva and we're gonna click on this Instagram icon. Again, we're gonna go up to that little link button and we're actually gonna paste the link right there. And then you can do the same for Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever. And then again, we have the bottom side where it's more additional work. Now let's get on to how to publish as a website. So obviously you're gonna have to preview this. I like seeing what it looks like on like the desktop version, but also mobile. Cause a lot of people are gonna see your portfolio through mobile if they're like finding you through like Twitter or if they just have email on mobile. Overall, this kind of looks really good. Again, as you can see, this video takes up almost the entire screen. So it does make sense to only like add three of your best work. And then again, click more work and it'll take you right to that slide. Again, this is your sign. Turn off that playback because all of a sudden the audio and the video and everything is just gonna play all at once. So once we are satisfied with our portfolio, we're gonna go ahead and hit publish this website. Now the really cool thing is you can have a free domain website through Canva. Um, this is what I personally do. It's the best option to go to if you're just getting started with UGC. Um, so you definitely wanna hit free domain. Okay, so you wanna hit continue and then you can review all of your settings. So like your URL, what it's gonna look like in your browser tab. So you can actually edit this. So for me, it'll be managed by faith.mycanva site slash, I'll just put like UGC portfolio. And then you can also edit this as well. Preview, preview. And then if you want to, you can add a website description. I personally don't. And then you can leave this off because there's nothing like super private. Um, so you don't have to have a password protection. Obviously this is gonna be like super public, but also I just click on hide my website from search engines in case someone looked up Managed by Faith. I didn't want them to just randomly see my portfolio. I just kind of am sharing my portfolio link to people that I'm interested in working with. So I just hit hide and then um, I hit publish and then now I can go ahead and copy and paste my portfolio link to all the brands and anywhere I want to. So that is how you create a UGC portfolio. Hopefully this was super helpful, especially for people who are just getting started. If you enjoyed watching, make sure you give this a thumbs up and comment below if you have any further questions. I'd love to help you out. And in case you're new onto the channel, I have a whole social media series where I talk a lot about UGC content creation as well as a day in my life and all of the things. So I will also link that playlist down below and also at the end screen. But I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in my next video really soon. Bye.